chickens. Hello. Hello, welcome, welcome back to another video. <laughs> I've angled the camera just so that you can have a little shot of Wiggins as we sit in the sun. Okay, I'm gonna get straight into it. <laughs> Let me just get my notepad. Um, welcome to my April wrap up. This month I read less books than I have for the past few months, which is kind of normal to be honest. I usually start quite well and then peter off a bit and like just don't really want to read for a bit. Um, and I still read quite a lot of books this month, but just less than the last few months, which is interesting because January and February, usually I would read like, read loads and reading loads for me is about five books a month. Whereas this month, yes, this year, it's been like, I'm reading loads and it's been like 10 books a month. So my slower month has turned into five books a month, which I think is crazy because my slower months, like maybe the last few years have been like one book, two book, which is still fine. But like, yeah, it's just interesting. Anyway, I'm going to give you a little overview of my month and then we'll head straight into the wrap up, which will probably be shorter, but will it? In April, I read six books and that was a total of 1,368 pages um, and then 16 hours and 57 minutes of listening time. Um, my TBR at the start of the month was 110 and my TBR at the end of the month is 108. I feel like I've done it wrong, but we're going to go with it. Um, my fiction and non-fiction split, I read four fiction books and two non-fiction books. Um, and then in terms of authors, I read four authors of colour and two white authors. My star ratings this month range from three to five, and that includes half stars. Uh, and then the source, where did I read from? Like what, where did I get my books from? I read three books from the library. Three, four, five, yeah. Three books from the library, one 2021 buy, one book from my TBR, and one review copy. Do 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 do. Those are my statistics. Let's head straight into the wrap up. Sorry, I'm squinting again. This always happens because I want to sit in here, but then it's like super bright. I hope you enjoy the wrap up. Let me know if you do. Before we head into it, I would love for you to subscribe if you are not already. It would mean a lot to me. I really enjoy making these videos and it would be nice if you did. <laughs> I will see you in the next clip. Say bye, Wiggins. Bye. Yeah, he's not playing. See you in the next clip. Hello. Okay, so this is the first wrap up clip I'm filming, which is really weird because it's the 19th of April. <laughs> and I don't know. Oh, hello. <laughs> hello. She chirps like a bird. I haven't really been reading that much. Um, I'm clearly in my little slump phase after reading just a mad amount of books in February and March um and I'm slowing down and that's okay <laughs> um so I have two books to talk to you about classic we're back to usual and hi ow minx that hurts put your claws into this blanket thanks very much <laughs> Can I do a wrap up with a cat on my lap? Maybe. Yeah, so I finished two books. I'm here to talk to you about two books. So the first one I finished on Friday the 16th um, and that was The Pretty One by Kia Brown. I really enjoyed listening to this. I listened to it on an audiobook through my library app service. Um, it's written by Kia Brown who is a black disabled writer, journalist, many things. Um, and it was just really interesting hearing her perspective on a lot of lot of different topics. Like each essay was very separate in its own right, but then focused on a particular aspect of Kia's life. So um, there was a whole like essay dedicated to chairs. Kia has cerebral palsy. And so chairs are a very big aspect of her life. Um, and so it's really like really fun the way it's written. It's quite comical but then informative at the same time and like I think in the intro she was like I hope you laugh in all the right places and it is really funny um but then it also obviously has like moments of seriousness which I think the balance was struck really well 
Um, but yeah, it like spoke about many different like pop culture and like representation in pop culture and like the importance of having disabled people in the writer's room, not just like on the screen, but like from the beginning, you know, um, so that you can get actually good representation on the screen. I really also appreciated um, her honesty throughout the essays. Um, it, she really stressed that like everyone is still learning people get things wrong but like trying is important hello <laughs> and like I don't know also like her honesty in terms of like her relationships with her siblings and like openly talking about where she has fucked up or like where actually in certain certain circumstances like she was a toxic friend to people it's just a very honest reflection um and it I think that kind of shows the sort of person and therefore the kind of reflection you get within her essays to be open enough to reflect on like her bad relationships or like where um where she has done wrong um so that was really interesting yeah i think overall it was just a really really great read and i would really recommend it so that is the first one <laughs> And then the second one I finished yesterday, and that is this book here, Lonely Castle in the Mirror by Mizuki Toshimura. This is a Japanese translation. It is published by Penguin um, Transworld Books, uh, and it's coming out on the 22nd of April. So by the time that you see this, it is out in the world. Uh, and this is a gifted product for review. Oh my God, this book. <laughs> I, okay, so let me give you a quick quick synopsis of this book there are seven students and instead of going to school they find themselves they find a mirror shining and they go through the mirror into a castle and so instead of going to school for a year they go to this castle they are tasked to find a key and this key will allow one of them to have a wish and then if they do not leave the castle by five o'clock each night the wolf will eat them that's the concept of this book. So firstly, that sounds super plot heavy, right? Like that sounds like that is going to be action, action, action. But no, no. So pleasantly surprised to find out that this is a character driven book. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Oh, love a character driven book. I love both actually, but like it was really lovely to have a character driven book within a book that has quite a like really interesting, unique plot. When there's like a unique plot, sometimes characters can get a bit thrown to the side but whoa no absolutely not the case this book heavily focuses on characters um and specifically it focuses on anxiety within teenagers and mental illness and especially within japan and the importance of openly communicating and talking about anxiety and talking about mental health issues in japan in a place where it may be more common to not talk about them I finished this yesterday, I haven't stopped thinking about it. I was trying to read my other book and I just couldn't get my head out of these characters, which like, we love to see that, but like, wow. I rated this four stars because I felt like, because it was like such a fantastical setting in the castle, I thought we would get a bit more like sensory description or like the atmosphere of the castle like would come through a bit more and it kind of didn't. Um, but I like, as I'm reflecting, I'm like, maybe it's a 4.5 because this wasn't that big of a deal to knock down a whole one star, you know? Like really good, I really liked this. Many plot twists, I guess none of them. Really interesting character exploration, would really recommend. What a good book, oh, so exciting. And yeah, on to the next one. I hope there's another one. I have a few book club reads to read that I haven't read yet, so Let's hope so. Let's hope my reading is back in gear. We'll see. Bye. Yeah. Hello, okay. Um, I didn't figure out what the day was before I started. Hello. <laughs> Today is Thursday the 21st of April. And yesterday I finished an audiobook. Um, I finished this really quickly because I was enjoying it that much so we love to see that. <laughs> the book is by Harbin Germer and it is called Harbin, the deafblind woman who conquered Harvard Law and it is very much an autobiography. It's narrated by her which was really lovely um, to hear. I absolutely loved this book. I've seen some reviews kind of saying I expected this to be really focused on Harvard Law which makes sense given the like subtitle. Uh, and it's not but I absolutely love 
that it wasn't. It was interesting, but I liked that it was a really encompassing autobiography. So don't go into this just expecting her experience at Harvard Law because it, it isn't just Harvard Law. So like we get snippets really from childhood all throughout um, to her adult life. And through these snippets, you then kind of get an insight into the obstacles that she faces or like misconceptions um, and just like her general life and friends and family. And it was a true, true delight to listen to. It was both like lovely, but funny, but informative. It was just a really well-rounded autobiography memoir. I don't know the difference between we get her family kind of background because her parents are from Eritrea and so that was really interesting because I didn't know anything about the Eritrean and Ethiopian conflict and so I learned a lot about that through listening to this book. Um, she spoke about when she went to Mali as a teenager to help build houses and that was really interesting um, and kind of like her determination especially with like her parents kind of trying to bubble protect her and her being like, no, I want to do things. And then just like the reflectiveness was really interesting because then when, for example, there was a section about her getting her first guide dog and she was talking about like the way that she was feeling towards her guide dog must have been the way that her parents felt towards her in terms of like protectiveness. Um, it's just really interesting. And then so many really, interesting conversations about accessibility and especially a focus on accessibility in tech because um, Harbin is a disability advocate and she obviously trained to be a lawyer um, specifically in the rights of disabled people to have access to technology um, and a particular case that I thought I would like flag that she spoke about that she was involved in was with Scribd. I never knew about this but I obviously relevant to the book world um, and really interesting. So basically they sued Scribd because their library of books was not accessible to blind readers um, because the technology or whatever that they use was blocked by screen readers. So people that use screen readers did not have access to their library. And so they sued Scribd and Scribd came back and said that the ADA, which is the American Disability Act, does not account for Play, like internet places and they were like all quoting these like places and so they had to fight that like of course it does include internet places and like it was eventually ruled that the judge ruled that like the ADA was created at a time when the internet was not big but like it was meant to encompass the developing technology and so a place which originally may have been thought of as a physical location have to be accessible does apply to internet places such as script. You visit a website, <laughs> you visit them, you know? So that was really, really interesting. And it's something I never knew. Um, obviously a lot of us as readers use script. Um, so I just thought that was a really interesting case because I had never heard of that. Um, so yeah, I would really recommend this book. I honestly, five stars, easiest five star in a while. That's not true, so many five stars recently, but like, you know when it's just like, this was amazing, I didn't want it to end. I absolutely loved it. It was really interesting and like, exciting. Like she was talking about the technology that she developed, this like system of communication, um, where like she has a braille um, computer and it's connected to uh, an Apple like wireless keyboard. So people will type, you know, what they wanna say and it will, in real time come up on her braille keyboard and in that way it like facilitates conversations and it just it's so it's so interesting um and really like exciting to like develop new ways and systems of communication it's only through facing barriers or through like for example with Harbin's disability that you have to be innovative and creative and find new ways to do things <laughs> this was a big long um thoughts but like I loved this book um so I would really recommend it if you haven't already read it on to the next one shall I do like a spin transition should we do it let's do it yeah. Ow, my knee. hello um it is whoa the 28th of April holy shit 
just gonna grab my cup of tea. I have two books to talk to you about. The first one is Last Tang Standing by Lauren Ho. Um, oh, when did I finish this? I finished it on Saturday because that was for Amy's book club. So I finished it on the 24th. Uh, so I've had a few days to think about it actually. And interesting, a really interesting book. Um, I, I'm not sure how I feel about it. It is an adult rom-com set in Singapore. We follow Andrea, who is a lawyer, she's a very successful lawyer, and we kind of follow her as... How do you even sum up this book? Like, her mum is expecting, like, children, marriage from her, and she's very, like, alright kind of vibe. And she is, like, the last one in her family to get married or have a baby or anything like that. Um, and so we kind of follow her like throughout her life. It's set in diary format, very reminiscent of Bridget Jones. Um, the comedy, I think, is really similar to Bridget Jones. Um, so that's really interesting. I don't think this is a book I would have picked up like on my own accord. Um, but I'm kind of, I'm glad that I did. I'm glad that it was a um, book club pick for from Amy's book club. So the overall story I thought was fun, was like very lighthearted. Um, it does feature like a love triangle and part of the love triangle is like ah oh, I don't know like one of the guy like it's like a love triangle and one of the guys it was just like so clear she wasn't going to pick him and then the other guy is like in a relationship already and so I really struggle to gel with situations like that so in terms of the actual like romance I didn't really care that much but I did enjoy following Andrea as she got up to a load of shenanigans um just like enjoying her general like commentary on things I thought was fun. I would recommend this book, but I would kind of recommend it selectively according to like people's taste, if that makes sense. But I wanted to also bring up a kind of interesting discussion that I had with Kate from Dear Catherine Anne, who is wonderful. Um, go and check her out. I will leave her links below. Um, but we were having a conversation about it because um, within the book, there's a lot of critique about um, stereotypical Asian culture. Um, so for example, like Andrea comments a lot about the kind of like exhaustive nature of the fact that her mum is constantly talking to her about like, when are you going to have kids? When are you getting married? Um, and so there's a lot of commentary about that. And there's also quite a lot of commentary in terms of like Asian parents being harder on kids than white parents. Um, so that was all really interesting um, and really interesting and kind of like, really interesting to hear like what Andrew was saying about it. There were some instances of fat phobia throughout the book. It's actually quite heavily throughout the book. I think one of the worst instances was in the book, like Andrea and a friend are going to babysit this kid and the parents was like, say, the parent was saying like the kid's routine and what they can and can't do, etc. And then they said they're on a diet because they're getting fat to a kid, like about a kid. It wasn't said to the kid, it was about a kid, but still, what I found hard, I think, was I think these things are important to be in fiction, um, but it wasn't ever challenged, like, so not even directly challenged, but it wasn't challenged in Andrea's mental narrative. She was like, in her diary format, was talking about like the scheduling of the kid and like how she was like, yeah, obviously you can just like watch TV, but it was never mentioned the fact that the parent called the kid fat and I think this is just an interesting discussion to have because that was really hard to read and the fact that it wasn't critiqued within I'm not I'm not criticizing it in terms of it actually being there because I think that is important a lot of people do experience that from their parents um I don't want to speak over anyone um but from the conversations I've had with people like this can be quite a common thing within Asian cultures especially like the older generation of Asian parents commenting on weight and things like that in such an open way um and so I'm not criticizing that it's in the book however it jarred me that it was never spoken about in a like critiquing way within the book especially because Andrea was critiquing other parts of the the culture that she felt was like forcing her down a path that she didn't necessarily want to go down I hope that made sense. Um, I thought it was just interesting to bring up because there is a lot of fat phobia in this book and it isn't necessarily critiqued. Yeah, if you've read this book, let me know what you think about that. But that's that. On to 
The next book is Adam Teen by Hannah Berry. This is a really random book that I picked up from the library. Um, it is a comic. I thought it was a graphic novel, but I think it is actually a comic. Um, the art style is really interesting and like very gritty and dark and not something I would usually typically be drawn to. I'll just kind of give you a flick through. Um, so this book is very, oh, I don't know. I read it last night. Um, it's very horror, atmospheric, tense, confusing. <laughs> uh, and so this book is basically set on a train like the whole thing is set on this train that stops in the middle of the night there are four passengers on the train and they're like why is it stopped what's going on what's happening are we being pranked xyz it was both like there was kind of some like really funny like commentary about like british public transport i just appreciated that and then it's also very like tense very creepy like isolated train what's going on something's going on so in that sense i really enjoyed it and i think the way that it built up atmosphere with the like gritty art style was really cool because there was like kind of like shadows and stuff that created different faces and stuff and i think in that way it was really cool however i didn't get the story <laughs> there's this interesting kind of discussion about this man that had potentially murdered these people but the jury had found him innocent but then something i didn't get it i was reading online and people were like you need to read it again to like fully appreciate the kind of layers within this comic like there's kind of a surface level conversation and then there's apparently a deeper conversation so i did not get the deeper conversation so maybe i should reread it because it is only like a half an hour read isn't it um but i think I don't know what to rate this book. Maybe 3.5, like I think the way that it did the tense creepy, like I didn't, I flicked all the way through immediately, but I did not follow what actually happened, if that makes sense. That's, yeah. I finished the book and I didn't feel a sense of closure because I wasn't sure what had been decided and what had happened. Um, maybe I'll read it one more time before I take it back to the library. Um, if I do, I will insert a clip now of my final thoughts. I just can't be bothered to read it again. I know that it's only half an hour, but I don't feel the drive, so I'm not gonna read it again. I know that it probably would provide some more answers. I just don't want to, you know? Not that I didn't like it, but I just don't want to. Thank you very much. <laughs> On to the next one. Hello. Okay, so this is the final book I read in April. April? Yes, April. Oh my god. Because it is now May. Yes. Oh my god, I don't know why I'm struggling so hard with that. Uh, this is Us Against You by Frederick Brackman. This is the second book in the Beartown series. Um, I buddy read this with my best friend Amy over at Amy's Bookshelf. Many thoughts, no spoilers obviously um, for both Beartown or Us Against You. Um, it took me a while to get into because I think Frederick Beckman's writing is brilliant. He explores characters so well, um, but it does jump around a lot between characters. It's not like you follow two or three people and that's it. Like you truly follow the whole of this town. <laughs> and so in that way, I find it hard to adjust to his books, but then they're always so worthwhile once I have adjusted. So in that sense, it took me a while to get into. Um, but once I was in it, oh, amazing. I think what I love so much about his writing is that he manages to describe the ways in which communities act and like the human condition, I guess. I sound like Amy. <laughs> so well, like I've never read a book slash I've never read writing that discusses that so incredibly and so like one-linery and it's amazing. So it, it follows on from the aftermath of Bear Town, so I won't spoil it, Bear Town, but it does discuss homophobia within sport and like homophobia within small communities and also the politics of small communities and the way in which politicians play people within the community off of each other. Um, really, really interesting. Um, and then also the relationships that we saw in Bear Town are developed in this book and I think it's amazing sequel. I gave it four stars um, for no obvious reason apart from like it innately didn't 
quite feel like a five, but I would highly recommend it. Especially if you've read and loved Bear Town, it is a solid sequel. And there is a third one. I can't remember what it's called. Something about fire. I'll put it here. Um, but it's not out yet, but like very exciting. So yeah, I'm so glad that I loved this, especially because I read um, my grandmother sends her regards and apologies back in like February or March or something. I just hated it. <laughs> so I was like really worried, but no, solidly, clearly just like that book and like this series and this his writing in this series is just phenomenal. So super happy to have finished that and a good one to end on. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for watching my April wrap up. Not as many books as the past few months because I am slowing down a little bit, which is nice. I need to chill the fuck out a bit. If you watch all the way to the end, if you don't have anything to comment, comment a little bear for Bear Town. For Bear Town, for us against you because it's the sequel to Bear Town. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you've had a good reading month. I hope that your May is getting off to a lovely start. Um, and I'll see you in a new video. Bye.